Good afternoon. This is Audra Beauvais, superintendent of MS 8060. I wanted to take this opportunity to provide a recorded follow-up message regarding the incident that occurred at Noble High School yesterday. There are a few things to further highlight, and I felt it most succinct to share the, a recording and then follow up the points in a community letter. This recording may last a few minutes, and I hope you'll be able to tune in for its entirety. I am referring to that community letter, making sure that I hit every point. To summarize, on Monday, a student's backpack was being searched as the student had been reported to have been in violation of the MS 8060 tobacco and vaping policy. During that search, a firearm was located. In collaboration with law enforcement, the firearm was immediately confiscated. As of this writing, we continue to be unaware of any threat made to a student or a staff member. It is important to reinforce a few points. MS 8060 has strong policies around weapons, violence, and school safety. The policy is JICIA and located on the MS 8060 webpage along with all other district policies. Here are two excerpts which clarifies how the district moves forward in such cases. Students who are found to have brought a firearm to school as defined by federal law, shall be expelled for a period of no less than one year. All firearm violations shall be referred to law enforcement authorities as required by law. Other violations of this policy shall be referred to law enforcement authorities at the discretion of the superintendent. Due to the fact that this situation does involve a firearm, law enforcement has been involved from the onset. The district has shared publicly all the details we are legally able to share. What that means is that the correspondence yesterday provided all the facts as they occurred. Law enforcement does work in partnership with the school district and has taken over their portion of the investigation. Students and staff safety remain our top priority. Across the board from law enforcement, school and district administration and staff, our first and ongoing concern is that of student safety and well-being. Attendance today was strong, given increased numbers of students fighting off a myriad of illnesses. That said, there were a small number of students who were absent due to this incident. School administrators and counselors had correspondence with some of these families and students throughout the day, and we are hopeful that tomorrow these students will be back in the classroom. Now I'd like to take a moment to highlight several safety protocols or measures followed throughout the district as they relate to student safety. This is not an exhaustive list by any means, but it does, does provide a good overview of the range of protocols or measures in place. Many of these have been long standing and are so ingrained in daily operations that students may not recognize that they are in place as an added layer of safety precautions. Here they are. Exterior doors are locked. Each school has an intercom system where visitors buzz in to access the building. Administrators and building-based secretaries monitor who is in the building at all times. All classrooms have locks. Staff have access to walkie-talkies while outside. This allows for any immediate communication with the school office or the school health office. Elementary schools modified procedures a few, few years ago to stream, streamline the dismissal process at the end of the day. These changes mitigate the amount of entry and exit activity occurring during the busy time of the day. Camera surveillance is in place throughout all district buildings. There is an anonymous tip line on the district and staff school web pages for any community member, parent, student, or staff member to report any potential concerns. There's also a community input section also located on the district web page as another forum to report any safety concerns. And finally, Student Code of Conduct, docu a document that guides responses to disciplinary and safety infractions, is located on the dis district webpage and also shared as a link in handbooks such as Noble High School. 
In conclusion, the district works in collaboration with local and New York County first responders and in partnerships with school districts so that we can do everything we possibly can to keep everyone safe. While this incident caused worry for all of us, it takes all of us to ensure that MSA D60 schools continue to be safe places for teaching and learning. Thank you for your continued commitment to that work.